Alright, welcome to J-Boss's Soapbox, episode 1, part 6. This is the final part. This episode is about guns, in case you haven't watched the other five parts. I decided to save, for the end, the discussion on the Aurora, Colorado shooting. Now, as we know, this is getting a ridiculous amount of debate, and that's why I decided to get it kicked to start on writing this episode, which I have started writing this before the shooting actually happened. We need to know that the, we need to keep those people from doing crazy stuff, you might say. Yes, I agree with that, wholeheartedly. And it is an, yeah, it is an abhorrent strategy of the likes that should never happen. However, that guy was determined. This guy was incredibly rare. Thankfully, this guy was incredibly rare. He is the worst case, craziest scenario that anyone can think of. That, statistically speaking, is very insignificant, as tragic as it is. But I'm going to go about that in a second. Anyway, there's, there's nothing you can do about determined people like that. They don't care about laws. They break as many laws as they have to, or do as much stuff as deliberately, legally as possible, in order to achieve their goal of killing as many people as possible. They're called criminals for a reason, because they commit crimes, meaning they break laws. They don't care about one bit about any new laws that are passed on gun restrictions. Because guess what? They don't obey the laws. So, those are the laws applicable to the law-abiding citizens that were either trying to prevent shootings like this from happening by stepping in and trying to wound or kill the shooter or would-be shooter, or simply people that like guns and want to have fun at shooting targets or hunt or whatever. They can't do that any of that nearly as effectively if you have a major gun control problem. If you... If you go completely off the wall and trying to restrict guns. I'm not saying to pass out guns to absolutely everyone. That's stupid. There has to be a medium where everyone, or at least the most amount of people possible, will be happy. But the, the problem with Holmes is that he didn't care about what would happen to him. So, unfortunately, most of these ideologies about concealed carry just won't work. The only thing that would work on him would be a squad of SWAT members. That's really all that is. And, and, and as tragic as it is, as much people won't want to hear it, I have a saying. The heart should set the goals, but it's the mind that should achieve them. We all want as little killing in the world as possible, me included. I'm a human. See, I'm human. But as tragic as this is, this was a very unusually well-planned-out nightmare scenario. I'm going to place my money on the fact that this will become hyper-famous, not only from the death toll in crime agencies and training programs, but also of the fact of how thorough this guy was. How uncharacteristically thorough of a criminal this guy was. I'm trying to put the emphasis on the fact that this was rare. All right, to show you that there isn't as much of a need to control guns as you might believe. Close, to be honest, close to squat could have been done, even in my propositions that I have previously stated. It's tragic. I agree. This man, I'm debating whether or not he should be called a man, deserves punishment under the full ex fullest extent of the law. But I also am doing my absolute best to keep my head on straight and not let any instincts take over. Here are the facts that need to either be introduced or rehashed. I don't... Ugh, sorry. I don't feel the need to cite any of the following because this information is really easy to find because it's all over the news. Here's why I believe that this was the perfect storm of a shooting. This guy was one of the very few that broke the overwhelming trend that he bought guns legally. So, and they were regular, regular guns. They're nothing crazy. So, one might think that the gun store clerks could have checked up on the guy's background more, but the guy's a PhD in neuroscience, no criminal history, no history of aggression, no history of mental incapacitation requiring hospitalization. There's no realistic way to do a more thorough background check that I can think of. This guy appears to have made a good effort at masking his true intentions for the most part, which, although as rare as entirely possible, excuse me. Though, admittedly, I just found out that he was denied permission to go to the gun to go to a gun range in July because for membership in July because the owner of the range did not trust his bizarre, potentially dangerous behavior. So there were a couple of signs, and yes, I would love it if it could be possible to make a law enforcement 
make the law enforcement to be even more effective at piecing danger signs together without becoming too infringing upon our privacy rights. And there, there would have been no way there would have been no way for a regular concealed carrier to save the day. He was one of the best equipped shooters I have ever seen. The individual guns themselves are not what are unique. An AR-15, a 12-gauge shotgun, and two 40 caliber handguns. However, what was individual was, one, how well equipped he was with all the other necessary accessories to help him in a firefight. Not only did he have four guns on himself. Okay, one of the handguns is in his car, but he brought it in along nonetheless. Most military people only carry two. A main handgun... Uh, sorry... A main long gun and a sidearm. He got twice as much as a normal soldier. A lot of ammunition, but he also had gas canisters, like tear gas, so people could barely see what was going on. I haven't been able to determine what the gas was, but I'm guessing it's tear gas. Um, body armor? Not just a bullet-resistant vest and a mask for identity purposes. He also had a ballistic helmet, ballistic gloves, proper leggings, throat and, gro uh, throat and groin protection, and a gas mask to protect himself from the gas canisters he had. He was as well equipped as a SWAT member, which would have been pretty much the only thing that could have stopped him. Now, vests, even military armors have ceramic strike that have ceramic strike plates, are only bullet resistant. They're not bulletproof. So a SWAT team would eventually get through the vest and kill him after a lot of rifle rounds or shotgun slugs. But it likely would have had to have been an entire squad after him to pin him down so none of the other SWAT members would be as at risk of a danger because of so many other rounds going in the bad guy's direction. And to top it all off, he succeeded in his goal of making this, cur this currently the deadliest shooting in U.S. history with 70 people killed or wounded. Oh, forgot to mention that he was in a dark, crowded theater of a popular movie at 1 in the morning. One of the best places to... Unfortunately, it's one of the best places to pick a shooting. And not only that, he wasn't done there. He was booby-trapped yeah, booby his house, as has been reported. Not only did he have a very sophisticated setup of wires and incendiary devices, couldn't find too much on how the house is booby-trapped, that info will come with time, but what is most shocking was that it wasn't even a defensive booby-trap to keep police from investigating his apartment or having it as a safe haven for himself when he retreated after the shooting. This was an offensive booby-trap that was deliberately made to lure people in and kill them as he intentionally turned on loud music as he left in the hopes that someone would eventually complain about the noise and someone and send someone up to his apartment for to investigate and to investigate and then open the door and then boom they die now i plan on concealed carrying eventually but had i been in this situation i would have just run i would have hightailed it i worked at a supermarket deli last year and i had to cut about five pounds of onions at a time once a week for the sub bar I had to stop every 30 seconds, walk away, and get another paper towel and wash my eyes and face because it hurt so bad and I could barely see. That was onions. One of the older guys I worked with was in the Air Force, and when he went through the training, he had to go in a room with tear gas for the sake of experience, so they know what they're getting into on it, what they might get into on occasion. He thought that since he was so used to onions, he could deal with the tear gas. <laughs> no. No. It was way worse. So... Put that on top of a dark theater with dozens of people running around and a guy whose armor I probably wouldn't be able to penetrate if I had anything short of a 500 Smith & Wesson revolver on me, which I won't carry because it's too big, way too high recoil, and the ammo is way too big to carry enough of, and unless my engineering prototypes would make me really rich, the, and the ammo would be far too expensive for me to shoot often enough so that I'd be comfortable to use it in a situation like that. That incident and the 2002 DC sniper were pretty much the only mass shootings that could not have been preventable because they were extra determined. At least from what I've been able to ascertain. I could be wrong on that though. So unfortunately, little could be done in these worst case scenarios. However, many other situations that turned out just as nasty could have been prevented outright or at the very least been stopped sooner before the casualty list was as monstrous as they turned out to be. I just watched the State of the Union on CNN this morning, and the governor of Colorado was on talking about the issue, and I agree with what he was saying. This was dis a disgusting tragedy, and I would like something to be done legally, but I can't see anything that could help the situation with about, without becoming too infringing upon our rights in one way or another. 
And even if all guns were banned, this man was hyper-intelligent, hyper-determined, and he would have found out another way to kill people, with a bomb perhaps, or whatever. Because as you saw, he was really good at making a booby-trapped uh, apartment. And he was also be considered a terrorist, not in the political sense, but in the sense that he wanted to instill fear in those around him that day by instigating a massacre. And if we give in to those types of terrorists, if we stifle our nation and sacrifice too many of our freedoms for the sake of safety, we would have done what he wanted. He would have won. Terrorists are like bullies. They're trying to get you to overreact. If we overreact and push through too many laws, he would have gotten what he wanted. Bin Laden sure... Bin Laden definitely got what he wanted. Let's not let Holmes get what he wanted. At least all of what he wanted, because he wanted to kill people. Unfortunately, he, he got that part of what he wanted. So, at the end of all of that, most people would think... Well, shouldn't we do something? Pass laws to ban guns in order to keep this from happening? And my first instinct was possibly to do so as well. But here's the harsh reality that America has to come to terms with. There was little that could have been done to have prevented it. I can't stress that enough. I know I've said it a trillion times, but I cannot stress it enough. And thanks to human beings being so resourceful, you can, you can successfully kill someone with almost anything if you're resourceful enough. I, I would like to do something as well, but in times like this, now more than ever, as counterintuitive as it might seem, you have to at least put your emotions on pause for a little while, or wait to form your opinions on what to do until after the rest of the nation has healed, if you can't stop the grieving, to remove your emotions from your decisions and look at the numbers. As tragic as this is, we have to look at the numbers. We have to look at the statistics. We have to look at the probabilities of this happening again. The casualty toll was certainly a staggering statistic. Yes, that, but that's not what I'm talking about. I call this a nightmare scenario for a reason. This is not a common occurrence. This is hyper, uber, super, duper, at as many, af at as many crazy, amusing, cutesy adjectives as you want, rare. As shocking as 70 people being injured or killed is, it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, even in the total death toll of homicides per year in the U.S. in this day and age. Even when the rates are overall going down. As nightmarish as it is, you have to look at the numbers. People like to place blame on a scapegoat, be it animate or inanimate. In this case, people want to blame guns. But as my statistics that I've compiled have shown, that is not the case. The real problem lies in the complexities of our economy, the social stigma and paradigms of our very nation, and how many different people from different backgrounds, education levels, and levels of affluence come collide in one place. As FedEx sent me ahead on Reddit's Our Guns had said, it's easy to pass a bill and run an anti-gun campaign. It isn't easy to break the social stigma of social programs that could bring options to people that don't otherwise see anything possible outside crime. Now, one of the warning signs is that he acquired a huge amount of ammunition, armor, weapons, and deadly incendiary chemicals. Maybe there can be a way that lawmakers can focus on that aspect and not guns and in and of itself. I can't really think of anything too specific, but maybe a law can be passed that if one buys a lot of stuff in a quick manner, maybe there can be a way for some sort of warning system to be raised and that for governments to watch that person more closely to make sure if nothing goes wrong or something like that. And nothing in the order of direct punishment, because that's punishing people who are not actually doing anything wrong at the time. But there are caveats to this, and they're very glaring. If we put a maximum allowable amount of ammunition and dangerous items, etc. to be purchased at one time, then Holmes, or the next shooter, or whatever, could simply be patient and more gradually buy the stuff over the time. And the other caveat, the bigger one, is... Is any possible... Alright... Is that any possible ways of trying to survey possible suspects like this can easily turn into a huge invasion of privacy, so I cannot think of an easier way to go around this. <sighs>